Hello and welcome, I'm Johnny and you want to test your Next.js app with Zest. Zest has become the testing framework for JavaScript and TypeScript and the latest Next.js release made setting it up much easier. So make sure you are on Next.js 12.04 or later. Let's install Zest as a dev dependency and create a Zest config.js. Next now ships with Next Zest, which will require and run to get a method to create our Zest config. To load our next config, we specify the root directory of our next app, which is right here, we ain't in a monorepo. We can pass it our own options object for Zest and export the result. This takes care of some things we'd have needed to set up manually, like how to resolve images, SVGs and CSS files. Plus, it uses the new, faster Rust transpiler instead of Bubble. Common options I pass here in all my apps are the test environment flag, JSDOM, we do want to test what the browser is doing in at least some of our tests, and clear mocks to avoid leaky tests, module directories to account for my tsconfig setting, which allows for absolute paths from the source directory, and a custom setup file to run right after Zest initializes, which other frameworks such as Create React App call source setup tests.ts. So let's follow that convention. We don't really have anything to add here yet. All right, let's add the test script in our package station. It's just going to execute test and run it. Great, it works, but we've got no tests. With the current setup, we can write tests for regular modules. So if we need to format currency UK style, we could start with a test like it adds the pound symbol, it adds commas every three characters, it supports decimals. Note that I've got a VS Code plugin, which also runs the tests and annotates them accordingly right in the editor. It's quite neat. All right, awesome. We can now test regular functions and other TypeScript first class citizens. What about React components? Oh. For that, we need to bring in React Testing Library, the library that helps you write better tests by design. It makes it easier to test user behavior, like clicking and typing, and harder to test implementation details, like setting React state or your class names. So let's install the React Testing Library as a dev dependency as well as its helper library, user event. It's now we'll finally use our setup test file. If we import extend expect, we supercharge the test matchers with some that make more sense and provide better output when it comes to UI expectations. Cool, now we can test a form component and say that from what I can see on the screen, I type my name in the name input, it will fail, it couldn't find such an input, and it even prints the DOM, so we can see that, yeah, that form is super empty. Who knew? Let's open that component, add an input for name, and a cool thing is that the test will still fail, because a screen reader still cannot tell we've got a name input here. Would you when we've got no label? But if we keep following the design and add a label associated to our input, woohoo! Test goes green and we can keep going with the test implementation ping pong until we've got a working form. Yes, I do prefer more integration-y tests for these, more of a story instead of isolated tests for each input and the button. Speaking of integration, clicking the button should result in an API call that integrates with a service like Postmark or SendGrid to actually send our email. To test things like that, I like setting up Mock Service Worker. Is that something you'd like to see? Maybe you're wondering, why are we writing tests in the first place? Do I really believe in TDD, test-driven development? When would we choose to use something like Cypress or Playwright? Let me know what you're wondering in the comments and thanks to everyone who's mentioned tests already. Most of all, thanks a bunch for watching.